I've gotten angry enough to where I've actually impulsively hit people, you know, not not meaning to at all, you know, or I'd punch a wall or something. You know, it's just like I get that you get this sudden rush and you've just got to release it somehow. Like Dean Lindstrom, Linda has impulsively hit people, but she does not have an antisocial personality disorder. For unlike Dean, she experiences pain and remorse from her actions. She engages in self-destructive behavior and other traits of the borderline personality disorder. The term borderline originally reflected the belief that these people fluctuated between neurosis and psychosis. Today, it's a distinct disorder with its own constellation of character features. Up to 4% of the population has borderline personality disorder, with women outnumbering men 3 to 1. Common character traits in the borderline personality are extreme instability and unpredictability in behavior, a fear of being alone, manipulativeness in relationships, impulsiveness, which we can see in promiscu prom promiscuous behavior or alcohol and drug abuse, and self-destructive, often self-mutilating behaviors. Borderlines have a defective sense of identity and are ridden with angry feelings. Sometimes it, it's, there's just so Linda and Kelly are in therapy with three other women who have also been diagnosed as having borderline personalities. They have all been in some kind of therapy for a minimum of five years and have made enormous progress. In spite of the dramatic improvements they've made in their lives, their pain is still very much evident. It just feels so bad. And it just feels so you know, painful, that, but you don't really know what you're feeling because everything's all jumbled up. You know, there's like a little ping pong game going on in your head with all these emotions <coughs> going around. You know, this group was started almost four years ago at the Capital say, District you know, Psychiatric Center in Albany. Dr. Marilyn Gavicki was the director of the Borderline Outpatient Program then. She is currently a psychologist in private practice. She talks about the first time she encountered borderline. And they acted out like no other group we ever saw. They caused more turmoil on the unit than any other patient group. Lots of self-abusive behavior. For instance, I've seen patients swallow tacks from our bulletin boards, break mirrors in the bathroom in order to cut themselves, throw furniture through our windows, and they found rather ingenious ways of sneaking alcohol and drugs on the unit. So we had our hands full. And although their behavior was extreme, they didn't fit the category of schizophrenia. And they, although their affects and moods at times suggested depression, they, they vacillated so much that they didn't fit a major depressive disorder. And sometimes it's gotten to the point to where I get so angry, I don't realize what I have done until after I've done it. You know, um, I have got this tremendous fear of getting angry now because I'm always afraid <laughs> I'm sorry because I'm always afraid that uh, I'm actually going to hurt somebody whether I mean to or whether I don't and it just really scares me to get angry at times this contradiction in their own self images and in the images of others is what contributes to the borderlines uh, difficulty in establishing a consistent sense of self this is why they're so unstable and why their behavior is, it changes so frequently because they're constantly shifting between images of feeling great to images of feeling terrible, images of seeing you as someone they love or images of seeing you as someone who's horrible and they can't stand. They have relationship problems, a lot of chaotic intense relationship, a lot of rage. Typically the rage is connected to a lot of childhood trauma for instance, incest, physical abuse, and so on.